Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks for getting started making one of the projects from my brand new book, 24 Crochet Hats, Interesting Techniques and Inclusive Sizing for Men, Women, Children, and Babies. Let's get started. This is the Alexa Tunisian Lace Hat. This hat has worked side to side in rows, combining a textured stitch pattern and a lace pattern to make the body of the hat and the ribbed brim at the same time. This is the simplest of hat constructions because you simply sew up the flat piece into a tube and cinch the crown closed. No shaping within the stitch pattern. This pattern comes in five different sizes. So make sure you pay attention to your gauge to make sure you make the right size for the recipient. The pattern is shown in the photo in size 20 inch circumference and I'll be making the smallest baby size for the tutorial. This pattern features Be So Cozy yarn, which is my number four worsted weight superwash merino and bamboo blended yarn, and we'll also be using an I9 or 5.5 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. Make sure you use whatever size crochet hook helps you to achieve the proper gauge so that you make the right size. Okay, like I said, we are working side to side for this hat in rows, not rounds. So we'll be making a flat two-dimensional piece of fabric that we will then sew into a tube and then cinch the crown closed at the end. I'll show you what that means when we get there. So once you tie your yarn to your crochet hook with, with whichever way you like to tie your yarn to your crochet hook, row one starts with a chain and you'll want to refer back to the pattern to see how many times you chain for whichever size of the pattern you're making to make the smallest size I'll be making a I'll be making a chain of 23 chains. Okay, and for the forward pass of row 1, we're going to insert our crochet hook into the second chain from our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, then insert your crochet hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and repeat this all the way across the row. For the return pass of row one, we're going to yarn over and draw through one loop on our hook, and then yarn over, draw through two loops on your hook. And for the rest of the row, you're going to repeat yarn over, draw through two loops. You want to repeat that all the way across. Okay, row two starts with the forward pass. We're going to skip the first stitch and count this loop on our hook as the first stitch. So we'll be skipping this stitch here. And now we're going to do a back post Tunisian double crochet around this stitch here. So it's yarn over your hook, insert your hook from back to front to back around the post of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we're going to leave that second loop on our hook. So now we're looking for this stitch here, that like upside down U, and we're going to do back post double crochet around that stitch as well. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook from back to front to back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So uh, that first chain counted as our first stitch, then our instructions say to back post Tunisian double crochet in each of the next st six stitches. So you wanna do that for the next four as well. And that's going to be the ribbed textured part of our brim. That's this section here. Okay, so now the rest of the row is Tunisian double crochet in each stitch across. So we're looking for that vertical bar right here, and it's yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's Tunisian double crochet. We'll do that again. And you want to repeat that all the way across. Okay, and now we're ready to do the return pass for row two, and that is yarn over and pull up, pull through one loop. Then we're going to chain two. Then yarn over and draw through the next six loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chain two. Okay, and so we're going to repeat from the chain two for as many times as the pattern says. So it's chain two. Yarn over, pull through six loops on your hook, chain two. Okay, 
Okay, and then the remainder of the row is to yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row two. Row three begins with skipping the first stitch, and then we're going to back post Tunisian single, uh, simple stitch around each of the next six stitches. So it's uh, so we're not going to yarn over this time. We're just going to work around the post of the next stitch from back to front to back. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and do that a total of six times. Okay, and then the rest of the row is to insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, in, insert your hook in the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the next cluster, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. So basically you're going to be picking up a loop into each of the chains and each of the cluster stitches across. So when there's four chains, you're going to pick up four loops. When there's two chains, you're going to pick up two loops. And when there's one cluster stitch, you're going to pick up one loop. And then pick up one loop in the last stitch. And our return pass for row three is to yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, and it is the yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook that we will repeat across. Okay, and remember, we are working sideways for this uh, hat. So we're, this is the height. I'm making the baby size hat. This is one of the larger adult size hats. Remember, we're working back and forth in rows. So as we work the rows, you want to make this length here the circumference of the hat. So I'm going to continue following the pattern for the smallest baby size hat, but whichever size you're making, you want to repeat rows two and three until the desired length, which ends up being the circumference. At that point, I'll show you how we assemble this into the hat. This is what your work should look like when you've finished making the hat. It's going to be flat and two-dimensional, and what we're going to do now is turn it to the wrong side and fold the hat in half with the seam to the center so that we can sew up the seam. I've taken, I made sure that my tail from fastening off was rather long. I have mine at least 12 inches long and I'm going to go back and forth in and out of both the first row and last row of the hat until I sew up the entire side seam of the hat. Okay, we've now seamed the side of the hat together, and I'm going to make one tiny little fastening knot there, and just so I can hold the place. And now we need to turn this tube into a hat, and how we're gonna do that is super simple. We're going to turn the hat to the side now, and weave in and out of that, of the side of the, of the tube here. Oops, I lost my tail. Let me get it back on my yarn needle. Okay, so we're just weaving in and out of this end of rows here. And work our way all the way around the entire tube. Okay, so we've made it all the way around now. And you simply want to pull. Don't pull so tight that you break your yarn, but you want to pull tight and taut enough that you have your yarn cinching that hole up completely. And I'll make a little tiny fastening knot like that and then turn my tail to the inside of the work and it'll be from the back side of the work here that I'll weave in my loose ends. If you happen to not like the cinching look at the top here, you could always cover this with a pom-pom, whether you did a faux fur pom-pom or a regular pom-pom, but it's also a different just type of a design aesthetic to have that gathered look at the top. If you would like more information about this pattern, all the sizes, plus the detailed chart, or any of the other hat patterns from 24 Crochet Hats book, you can follow the links in the video description for the yarn, the pattern, and the book. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave them for me in the comments. And everything we talked about today is linked in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.